What's going on guys, Dylan DeJesus here, and welcome back to another episode of Ask DCF. It has been a crazy of couple weeks, we have a really cool video coming out next week, so we needed something a little bit on the lighter side this week, but in order to go along with that, we're also going to be giving away a 12 ounce starter kit. So what we have here is my favorite 12 colors when just starting out all in the one ounce bottles. And all you need to do to win this is comment your favorite Angelus color down below and we'll go ahead and announce the winner to that later in the week on Instagram. So be sure to follow us over there. But without further ado, let's go ahead and dive into some of your guys' questions. I think a lot of people are actually struggling with this one. I think over the past year, it's been a little bit harder to get too thin, especially in some larger quantities. So I think that if you were absolutely in a pinch, one thing that you could do, although it may not be recommended to necessarily mix brands together like this, is if I had to, I would probably try to pick up another reputable art brand's airbrush medium. So a company like Golden or Liquitex, they probably sell an airbrush medium that you could probably pick up, hopefully maybe at your local craft store or on Amazon or something like that, and then use that to thin out your Angelus paint to run it through your airbrush. Uh, Angelus paint has actually gotten a lot thinner over the years, so it's becoming closer and closer to essentially airbrush ready right out of the bottle. But one thing you definitely still wanna do is make sure to at least strain it, even if your paint is thin enough. So I don't think I picked up a vinyl cutter till I was probably somewhere around five to six years uh, already into customizing, whereas I certainly had an airbrush within the first year or two. I wasn't able to use it very well because I kept buying cheap airbrushes, but I certainly knew that I wanted to do a lot of designs that I think absolutely require an airbrush, so I really wanted to pick up one of those first. Whereas stencils, one of the main things that I just wanted to do with them was speed up my workflow a little bit and come out with some cleaner, precise logos, just get a little bit of a head start when it comes to doing complex sort of detailed logos and whatnot. But for years, I, I never really had too much of an issue with putting logos on shoes or designs because I could always do the image transfer technique, which we have a couple videos on where you just transfer your Im image from whether it be a screen on your tablet, your phone, your computer, use a little bit of tracing paper, and then you're able to get it onto the shoe. So I think that the airbrush is going to be a little bit more important when you're just starting out. <laughs> Ah, the age-old question. I wish I had a better answer for this, but what you're seeing is essentially just a completed photo. Anybody can do that. Anybody can paint anything they want on the shoe, on the sole, whatever type of shoe they want to work on, they can paint the sole and then take a completed photo and you just assume that, wow, somebody found a way to paint a sole or that's going to stick or that's going to hold up. Or you'll even see the uh, scratch test where you know maybe they hold an X-Acto knife up to it and try to rub off the paint. But that doesn't have anywhere near as much impact on the sole on when you actually put them on your feet and wear them out on concrete. And I promise no scratch resistant, no finisher, no amount of prep is gonna stop anything from the bottom of the sole actually cracking once you actually start wearing them. So all you're seeing is a completed photo of a painted surface. I think that this is something that is incredibly situational and there's no exact formula for it. It's really about where you are sort of as a business and within your journey or your career. Maybe you're just starting out and you have the opportunity to work with an influencer, a celebrity, or an athlete or something like that. And this could sort of be your big break. So it could absolutely be something very beneficial to you. It doesn't always need to be about the money you can make today. Sometimes you need to try to think about the money you can make in the future on a project. And I think that if you draw in a large new following or a large new audience, now it's about you trying to convert all of those into future dollars. You also might be doing very well already and have a ton of already prepaying clients and you don't necessarily have the room to take on projects where you don't necessarily know where they're gonna go. Sometimes that can happen when you're working with celebrities or influencers. You don't really necessarily know where it's gonna go if it's a non-paid for project, but something good that can come out of that is if it's not paid for, 
Maybe this is a time where you have the opportunity to really test out some things. You have full creative control, really, if they're not paying for it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can look at this, but I think it's really situational. And try to not necessarily always just think about the right now in the moment, what does this mean for me? I know that's sort of something that always clogged my mind, maybe when projects or opportunities came up over the years, when just hearing about it, like, hey, are you willing to take on this project for free right now? But what can it turn into in the future? That's definitely the way that you always wanna think about it. Ultimately, I just want to be a great tool or resource that I sort of wish was available when I was starting out. Eight or nine years ago, there wasn't as many YouTube videos or blogs or very detailed information at all on how to customize shoes. And if you reached out to other artists, it was very much, hey, you need to go do your own trial and error. You need to put in the work to find all this out. And I just wanted to be uh, a place to come to to try to learn more about this stuff. And I think that Competition is good. Breeding new people to enter into the stratosphere of custom sneakers is only gonna motivate me to work harder. And there's so many potential clients out there. There's plenty of room for everybody to grow in this industry and plenty for all of us to eat per se. <laughs> All right, well, we have been lucky enough to work with a lot of cool celebrities and athletes over the years, but if I had to pick somebody, I think at the very top of the list, it would of course be MJ himself. And if there was anything I could cook up, it would certainly be a pair of Jordan 3s. If there was somebody else a little bit off the beaten path that I think would be really cool, a project that I'm gonna find a way to do in the future, I think it would be really cool to make uh, custom pairs for my favorite band, A Day to Remember, and deliver to them uh, at a concert. I think that would be really cool. Maybe be able to meet them before or after the concert and deliver them some custom shoes. That would definitely be a surreal experience, I'd say. At the end of the day, guys, does it really matter? I mean, who really cares if they're a fake pair of shoes? I think that there's some downfalls to potentially working on fake shoes. Typically, they're gonna be a little bit cheaper. The quality is gonna be a little bit lower, so it's gonna be a different surface working on, so it's not necessarily going to translate over to when you do work on a real pair of shoes. They're gonna prep a little bit differently. They're gonna paint a little bit differently. But it seems that the biggest thing that people are trying to work through when entering into the custom sneaker space is budget and money and cost and everything adding up. All the paints, all the supplies, all the base shoes. This stuff isn't necessarily cheap. So if that's one thing that you need to cut corners on when just starting out, it's just more important that you're just creating. Like that's literally the most important thing that maybe this is the opportunity for you to test out new designs and this could be a shoe that you're literally just testing out new schemes with and that's so much more important than holding yourself back because you can't afford a new pair of shoes at the time. So in the grand scheme of things, who really cares? I know that it might be uh, normal to think, oh my goodness, I could never work on those and post them and you don't even have to post them. They could just be what you're practicing on, what you're really getting familiar with designing on, and rather than just doing it all on the computer, now you're actually putting it to application and testing things out. It's all about just creating and not letting yourself get held back by anything. And our final one here, anytime we post one of these Q and A's on Instagram or something like that, this is one of the most common responses and it never gets old to see. We're so thankful for you guys. If there wasn't an appetite and a hunger to learn more about customizing shoes from you guys, this page wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be here. So as much as you guys wanna try to thank us for hopefully helping you and guide you in your customizing journey, we can't say thank you guys enough for continuing to support us here on YouTube. The growth of this channel over the past couple years is, it's absolutely mind blowing. You always hear about where do you see yourself in your business in five years and, and five years ago or three years ago when I met Jason or two and a half years ago when we really set out to pursue YouTube, we never could imagine that we would be here. So like I said, as much as you guys say thank you to us, we wanna say it right back. And that's gonna be it for us this week, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to comment your answer for the Angelus Paint giveaway down below. Go ahead, give this video a like if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed, and we'll see you guys in that next video.